Hi everybody, welcome to the first ever Modern Massacre Aftermath. Uh, this is a style on the show where rather than play a league live, I'm going to go over a league that I previously played because I had a very good one uh, while I was practicing Cheerios here that I'd like to go over. Uh, don't forget, as always, to like, comment, and subscribe to the Other Coast Games for more modern content. And now I'm going to quickly go over the deck that we've got here. Uh, the basic premise with Cheerios is we have a number of zero-cost equipments, a quarter shields, bone saws, cather shields, paradise mantles, spider sled nets, and the honorary zero-cost sig sigil of distinction. Uh, all of these, when combined with pure steel paladin and SRAM senior edificer, will allow us to draw our deck and storm off using grape shot. Uh, we use cards like Retract and Repeal to buy our artifacts back to play them again to draw more cards. Uh, and Mox Opal helps us generate mana to play Retracts. It makes Retract free, essentially, uh, and all of that again to build up to Grape Shot. Or in the odd case, you beat down with Monastery Mentor and Monks. Uh, I say the odd case game one because you will, uh, against control decks and mid range decks, you want to bring in Monastery Mentor to uh, help shore up those matchups, give you uh, more of a go-wide presence. Silence to help us protect the turn, where we go to combo off. Path to Exile for things like Primeval Titans uh, and anything that would prevent us from casting our artifact spells. Fragmentize, primarily for Amulet of Vigor. Um, this was very helpful in at least one game in this league. Brenton Forge Tenders for against Burn, Red Phoenix, so on and so forth. Uh, and Hercules Recall works great against Affinity. Is also another copy of Retract, sort of, to allow you to buy back your artifacts to play again. So it's a Storm deck with a little bit of a different flavor than our uh, typical Is It Storm. And we're going to get into our league matches right now. Okay, we're going to take a look at our round one loss against Morphling here. We come into game one, we win the die roll, and we see this for our initial hand, which just does nothing. Uh, looking back, like if we draw any of our um, Pure Steel Paladins or SRAM, this isn't terrible, but it's not great. We can definitely do better. So I ship it back, and we get this pile of nonsense where we have a SRAM, we have the card that we wanted, we have Cheerios, but we have no lands or any mana in which to cast it. Our opponent's kept a 7 as well. So we go ahead and we see this 5. And this is okay. We can still make something happen with this hand. We don't need another repeal. It's fine because we're going to fetch anyway. And I think to myself at this point that I can pretty well have game against anything that's not um, not green black. So I believe I ascribe both of these to the bottom because I need land, and I ship it over to our opponent, who untaps and plays a blooming marsh into an inquisition. So we're pretty dead in the water here. They take one of our SRAMs, so I'm thinking uh, they probably either have a removal spell in case we get lucky here, we draw another Paradise Mantle, which I believe I misclicked into playing. Um, I thought of maybe being able to draw a Mox Opal, but we ship back to our opponent who plays a Verdant and has a Thought Seize, and there goes our other SRAM. So at this point, we are very dead in the water. Oh yeah, right, we're going to repeal this Paradise Mantle to try to draw a card. And now we have another mana source. We have to play all of our artifacts to get it, but we have the mana source, and there's the Pure Steel. So I figure there's a better chance that we get to do something with this next turn if we just play out all of these artifacts. And we ship back to our opponent. At this point, like, green-black seems really quite favored here. 
They abrupt care Mox Opal. We don't have the mana source anymore. We feel pretty bad, but they would have gotten their Paladin if uh, if we had played it out. So we draw an Oxra Survival. We consider putting the Revival on top of our library or even a fetch land so that we can actually start to do something. And our opponent has a Scoos. So at that point, we have to Noxious our Marsh Flats because we can't cast the Noxious otherwise. They'll just eat what we're trying to get back. And they Assassin's Trophy our land, which I wasn't thinking. Shuffling our Marsh Flats back in, but it doesn't really make a difference at this point. We are very much dead. I believe I give them one more turn and then just let them end me. Because here I believe they eat both SRAMs. They have us on a four turn clock and we can't really recover from that. We draw a SRAM and we scoop it up. So that was game one. Unfortunate, but uh, you know, green-black is going to be one of our tougher matchups. So we sideboard a bit. Unfortunately, I don't have records of the sideboards, but I know I brought in Monastery Mentors against uh, against Green Black. So we're going to go ahead and have a look at Game 2. Okay, so we go ahead into Game 2, and we are met with this as an opener, and this is absolutely fine. It has some game. We know that we are susceptible to Hand Disruption. And that's, we're basically against Mono Hand Disruption here. So our opponent has the Blue Marsh and a Mishra's Bobble. And at this point, I think maybe I get to keep a card. But they look at the top of our library to see what we're going to draw so that they don't take a redundant, excuse me, so that they don't take a redundant effect with this Duress and they snag our Mox Opal. So that's okay. They get to draw another card. We had a Paradise Mantle. At this point, we have to try to get something going on with SRAM. If we had the Mox Opal, this would have been amazing. But, uh, of course, they took that from us that we couldn't play the Retract. And there's another Retract. And there's a Repeal. And a Land. So we end up with all blue spells. Really, really bad uh, Cheerios moment there. We pass back to our opponent. Like, we have Retract. We have a way to play all of these again. We just ran out of steam. And our opponent's deck has so much removal in it. Like that right there. And they get to take our Repeal. So now we have no way to draw cards. And that Collective Brutality was just absolutely horrible for us. So we play our Sacred Foundry. We draw a Bone Saw. We're in a position now where as long as we draw something... We have some game. Our opponent has another Collector Brutality to rip another Retract. They have so much hand disruption. Like they have Duress and Collector Brutalities out of the sideboard. Um, I guess Brutality is like really good right now. So I consider holding that fetch land just to represent another card in my hand, but I don't really see a point. I'd rather have the mana available. Our opponent continues to make land drops. They don't have to do anything right now. They don't have to apply any pressure. And get another Hollow Fountain. We draw a Sea Chrome Coast. There's 19 lands in this deck. Um, and we've drawn quite a few. So our opponent again making land drops, passing back. There's a Pure Steel. So we're going to try. Pure Steel's an ETB, unfortunately. So we don't get very far, but we need to start making them use cards from their hand in order to get anywhere. So our opponent doesn't make a land drop for once. We have a Mox Opal, which I'd rather just have on the battlefield. And we pass it back again. Our opponent now has a Hissing Quagmire. They found an actual threat that they can kill us with. We have a Sigil. So now all we need I'm pretty sure our opponent starts hitting us here. Yeah, so they fire up the Quagmire. Start trying to get home with it. 
And they actually end up doing a fair amount of damage to us with this Quagmire. We've drawn another land. Unfortunately, this game's not the most interesting. We just kind of get our asses handed to us. You saw on the screen there. Yeah, so now they have a 5-6 Tarmogoyf. We draw a Mentor. So here we have an opportunity to maybe do something, we think. So now I get to play the Sigil. And our opponent has Slaughter Pact. This is a card I haven't seen in a long time. I wasn't expecting this. I expected them to be cracking some fetch lands. So we repeal in response, so we at least get another monk and we get all of these artifacts back. We let this absolutely depressing stack resolve. And we are left with two 1-1 one, one prowess monks. Now our opponent goes ahead and cracks some fetch lands. They have to pay for their pact. It doesn't really matter to them. And uh, they go ahead and fire up the Quagmire. Well, they don't fire up the Quagmire this turn. I thought they do. They come with the Tarmogoyf. I'm not blocking. Because I feel if I have a repeal or anything on the top, I can start actually making some progress. But now I kind of just have to play these big prowess monks. I make a bit of a misplay here. I want to equip the Paradise Mantle, but I can't. So I have to play the Mox Opal. I put the Bone Saw instead, so I have something that can sort of contend with this time we're going with. And our opponent's more than happy to trade Quagmire for our Monk here. Because they're so far ahead. And then they had the Assassin's Trophy, as well as the last card in their hand. So we ship it back to them. We go to one here, because they have another Quagmire. And I believe we draw Stone Nothing. Right, because they get to Eternal Witness back the Slaughter Pact. And at this point, we draw a Noxious Revival and hand it over to our opponent. So, the first round with this deck was an absolute crushing defeat. Um, that's what happens when you play non-interactive combo decks like this. You sometimes just end up getting stomped into the ground by decks that attack your hand and your permanents. Um, but it's all uphill from here because we went 4-1 in the league. So we're going to go ahead and have a look at match 2. Right, here we're going to look at match 2 against 5-ace deck. Uh, they are on blue-white control. We lose the die roll. But we see a hand with mana sources and redundancy in SRAM and Pure Steel Paladin, so we decide to keep it. Uh, in retrospect, this may have been a bad idea. It was We had just come off the back of that crushing defeat to Green Black, and I wanted to have redundancy around. Here's Mentor. So another one of these similar styles of effects. We have one Mentor main deck. Um, this match goes pretty slow at first. If I recall, our opponent has, uh, you know, playing blue-white control, they don't do a whole lot in the early turns. And we sack our Marsh Flats, go ahead and get our Hollow Fountain, and we draw another SRAM. So at this point it's feeling pretty awkward, but we want to run out one of our uh, payloads here for our opponent to go ahead and dispatch. Um, SRAM because we can't have multiple of them on the battlefield. We could have multiple pure steals if we drew more and we have the redundant SRAM. And they de-sphere our SRAM, which is fine. Or we thought it was fine at the time. So now we finally have something that allows us to generate a payoff. And we decide since we're against blue-white, we're going to slam Mentor. And this allows us to generate a little bit of value. We don't want to go ham on it because playing blue white, we know blue white plays main deck supreme verdicts. So we want to be a little cautious. We draw a sigil of distinction for turn. Then we go ahead and launch out a SRAM. And now we have a ridiculous amount of triggers to put on the stack. 
And I believe at some point here our opponent does take care of our mentor. Go ahead and play the blank sigil of distinction. Buff our guys up a little bit. We get in for a pretty big hit here against our opponent. And yeah, this is where we stop. We hit our opponent for 7, putting them to 11. They condemn, which I was not expecting. So they actually only hit them because they block with this, or they uh, put the Snapcaster Mage out. I don't recall if they end up blocking. No, they just let it go. I think they Supreme Verdict here. If I recall, which sets us back quite a bit. No, it wasn't this turn. We take it, we just gained four life. Oh, yes, it is this turn with a Supreme Verdict. There it is. So the board's cleared. We go ahead and we fetch. We untap. We draw a Spider Silk Net, which is really nice. Uh, we are in a position where we have a lot of stuff to try to start going off with. And we draw another land. So we just suit up our Paladin a little bit. Our opponent has a Jace. They bounce our Pure Steel. If I recall, they also had a Spell Snare for it on the way back down here. Which is exactly what happened. I could have Noxious Revival Sram. I didn't expect the Spell Snare. Uh, they start to accrue lands and everything. We put the Pure Steel back on top. We try to play our Pure Steel Paladin. It gets Cryptic commanded? Or is it Logic not on this one? No, it's Cryptic. So we pass back to our opponent. We scooped at this point to our opponent, I think. Um, after not being able to collect payoffs. So we go ahead, we give it to them. So we sideboard heavily into the Monastery Mentor plan. And we go ahead and uh, also bring in Silence. So we see this as an opening hand. And we decide that this is fine. It has things that we want to do. Uh, nothing on turn one though. But we do have a Mentor. The first few turns are kind of boring. Our opponent has left up um, mana to opt. We draw a Silence, which does come in important later. Uh, seeing our opponent play the untapped Hallowed Fountain and then uh, comes back with not casting Opt. I feel like they were on path here. So we're a little conservative with how we try to pop this off. Play our artifacts. Ready for our opponent to path our Monastery Mentor. They cycle a higher end a turn. I believe they pa they path it on their turn. Opponent passes back to us with a bunch of mana open. We play a bone saw. Generate a whole bunch more dudes. We cast silence. This is where the path comes in. We force our opponent to act by casting silence. Go ahead and fetch a basic land tapped. We end up with a bunch of monks. We get to cast this retract. Keep ticking up our prowess. So we're just going to click through all these triggers here. We hit our opponent for 12. We don't want to launch off this quarter shield because we can get four prowess triggers off of it next turn. Our opponent puts themselves to five. We untap for their turn four, and our opponent supreme verdicts, which is fine. At this point, we know what we must do. And to pass with this retract, and our opponent just lands a planeswalker here. Yeah, it's a Teferi. So they draw a card. They get to untap their lands, but here comes 
why uh, Monastery Mentor is a great include in this deck. We get to untap. Oh, it's not this turn. It's this turn. The opponent ticks up. We just need a red source now. Like They have landed two Planeswalkers. At this point, I am feeling awful about this game. Um, but we draw the Flooded Strand, and I almost just pass the turn. I come to my second main phase, and I realize we have an out here. We get the Sacred Foundry. We cast Retract, because we know... This is actually really important. I cast Retract there, because I know we'll have enough Storm to Grape Shot, and we didn't just blow our load uh, in case they had a counter spell for Retract, but they didn't counter it. So we get to play out our artifacts again, which puts us to six storm count when we cast Grape Shot, and we Grape Shot our opponent, same target for all of them, and we win game two. So now, coming into game three, we're on the draw, we're on the same Mentor Silence plan. Our opponent chooses to play first. We see, admittedly, a pretty fine hand. Our opponent mulls to six. They keep it and they scry to the bottom. They play their fetch land. We play a tapped Hallowed Fountain and ship it back. Um, I thought about playing a Cather Shield and just repealing it to dig a little deeper, but I feel like I want these repeals for turns where it's going to matter more. Opponent fetches Basic Island and opts. They play a Wall of Omens, and this, to me, was their undoing. I don't know why they tapped out unless they, like, they couldn't have had anything, right? Because we have the Retract, we have the SRAM, we have three Cheerios. I suppose they don't know that. So, we get to start doing Cheerios things a little bit. Not huge, but we draw a Mentor. Opponent plays a tapped land. Opponent paths our SRAM in our upkeep. We go ahead and find the planes. We draw a silence. So now I know what's going to happen. The next turn, I'm going to... Is it next turn that I do it? I think. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is great. I crack my fetch, I get the Hollow Fountain, my opponent Field of Ruins me, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, so I float the blue and retract. So now I have all of my storm count in my hand, we have four lands, we untap, we draw, we cast Silence, and we draw a Mox Opal, which is exactly what we wanted to see. So we cast a Mentor, we start this path, playing our artifacts, making a ton of monks. I don't know why I didn't play the Mox Opal. I think this is I wanted the prowess for next turn and I wasn't going to use the mana because I wasn't going to attack. And I figure if my opponent has that eh, Teferi is fine, he bounces my Mentor. So now we have the Accorder Shield. We go ahead and recast our Mentor, which gets Logic Knotted if I recall. Yes, it gets Logic Knotted, so that's fine. That basically gives us the ability to do what we want for the turn. We put Mentor back on top. Because we know we're going to be drawing at least one card this turn from Repeal. We play our Recorder Shield. We play our Mox Opal. Our dudes are getting huge. We Repeal our Mox Opal. So we can play it again. We've drawn our Mentor. Play our Mox Opal. Repeal the Mox Opal. Draw Paradise Mantle. So now our guys are all 9-9s. Nine 
after we play this Paradise Mantle. And we just attack our opponent's life total. It puts them to one. So they need exactly Supreme Verdict or yeah, exactly Supreme Verdict, I think, to save them at this point. Opponent untaps, draws, and concedes. Um, so, Monastery Mentor, definitely the path you want to be on against the interactive decks in the format when playing Cheerios. Uh, we're going to go ahead and examine match three. So, match three. We're against Igor Barbosa. They won the die roll. And we see a hand that we ship back to... A totally fine hand, since we have the mulligan, we have the serum visions, the one of in the deck. Uh, we scribe this bone saw to the top. It's actually pretty decent. So the first few turns, I'm just going to let play out, because not much exciting happens. Uh, opponent sleight of hand, I'm not sure if they're on Storm or on Phoenix at this point. We go ahead, we play our Sea Chrome Coast, cast the serum visions, we see a flooded strand which we don't want and a spider silk net, which we absolutely do. So we put the net on top. Our opponent untaps and continues to play cantrips, digging for the things that they need. They ship it back over to us. We drop our hallowed fountain into our SRAM and start... No, we don't draw cards yet. Never mind. Opponent plays thing to the ice. They bolt our SRAM, which makes me wish that we had played some of our artifacts uh, last turn. So we make a land drop and pass, and this turn our opponent flips their thing in the ice, but thankfully we drew this repeal. So they invest their entire turn. They have also invested three of their lightning bolts. We crack our fetch, repeal Oaken Horror, and draw another SRAM, which they no longer have the ability to interact with. We play our SRAM, and we have double retract in hand, plus a land drop, plus a ton of... Uh, a ton of artifacts we have the ability now we create a ton of advantage for ourselves we ship the turn back they play a crackling drake and a mountain which leads me to believe that they were just digging for the answer we get our retract back we play a sram we play a pure steel paladin to go along with them and at this point, it's just academic, because we're drawing two cards with each of these. We have the Retract. Uh, so you can see it's going by pretty quick here. We play Artifacts, we Retract, we build our Storm Count up. We've drawn Mox Opals, which we don't need to cast Grape Shot now, and we have Grape Shot in hand. So our opponent, once we hit the Storm Count, uh, goes ahead and concedes the game. And we are on to game number two. So looking at game number two... I can't recall off the bat if we had sideboarded into Silence. I know we didn't sideboard into Mentors. And this is our opening hand, which this is perfect. We only have the one pure steel, so if they have any interaction, like if they have any lightning bolts or things in hand, it's kind of rough for us. But to me, this is perfect. You can't ask for more with the Cheerios hand. Our opponent leads off with Faithless Looting, dumps two lands, ships it back to us. We draw another Cheerio, and we're happy to just pass it back. Opponent plays Pyromancer Ascension, which has been a plan B in these Phoenix decks. It might even be a plan A. I don't know the deck super duper well. But we go ahead, we get a planes, we play our Pure Steel Paladin. We get the opportunity to draw a couple of cards. We play out a bunch of artifacts, and I forget. I want to stop right here. I forget to equip these a quarter shields to my Pure Steel Paladin. Never do this. Pure Steel Paladin's Metalcraft ability allows you to equip things for zero mana. See here, you can equip for zero. Um, if our opponent had a Lightning Bolt, then Pure Steel's gone. We do have the backup in hand, but you always want to make sure that if you're ending your turn, you're equipping your Paladin with shields, you're equipping your SRAM if you have a Paladin on the battlefield, to save them from the damage. So our opponent's just casting spells to get a Phoenix back. So they go ahead and hit us with. They're tapped out. So this is our moment. We play another Pure Steel Paladin. We have the Retract. And at this point, I did board into Silence. Okay. At this point, it's playing Artifacts until we draw Grape Shot, which I believe takes quite a while. You can see we end up with a million cards in hand. We finally get the Storm Count. We get the Grape Shot. 
and we kill our opponent. It was a pretty academic match for us. Um, the deck really came together. Again, one misplay. Should have equipped these shields to our Paladin when uh, we passed the turn. If our opponent had a Lightning Bolt, we would have struggled much more to win that turn. But a uh, nice and easy match against one of the top dog decks in the format. We're going to have a look at match four. All right, match number four. This was another very quick one. It's against Senguman. Uh, I keep trying to click the buttons like I'm actually playing. Uh, so we won the die roll. We absolutely want to play first. And we see this hand, four lands in a 19, hand, 19 land deck. We do have two SRAMs and a Mox Opal. We go ahead and keep it. So we have so many Cheerios that we can draw into that we decide to just let the, uh, let the chips fall where they lay. Our opponent leads on Steam Vents tapped. So at this point I'm anticipating some kind of blue-red control deck. Where they've tapped out, I go ahead and start to draw a little bit. Because I know I have this Mox Opal. It will enable some busted stuff if I need it to. But since I don't draw another artifact, I just let it pass. Opponent has the island, and now they have untapped mana. We've drawn Retract, so we hit them with SRAM just to kind of bait out any Lightning Bolt or anything. We play the Paladin, we play the Mox Opal, and our opponent just scoops. Um, they clearly did not have a hand that could actually interact with anything, and they, I'm pretty confident... Like, we get to play the Mox Opal, we tap up a blue, retract, draw four more cards. I don't think there's a state where we lose from that point, but uh, very quick game one. We're going to go ahead and have a look at game two now. So game two, uh, we're presuming we're against a control deck, so we board into some Mentors and some Silences. That's most of what happened this league, actually. We played against a lot of interactive decks. We see this. We have no payoff, so... I believe we ship that back. We see Redundancy. We have the Paradise Mantle and a Repeal. This is a fine hand. We keep and we scry a Silence to the top because we know we want to be able to cast that uh, on turn where we're ready to go off. We play our Marsh Flats. Our opponent has the classic Island Opt. I do like their choice of Island Art. They play Scalding Tarn and pass. We go ahead and find a Tap Hollow Fountain. We untap. We have a Spider Silk Net. And we pass. Oh, I thought we were passing. We get a SRAM. They opt in response. We play a Spider Silk Net, and at this point, I believe they have the Bolt for SRAM. Yeah. So we do get to draw a card. It's a Sigil. So our Spider Silk Net replaced itself. All we need, uh, what I'm thinking here is all we need is a Mana Source to be able to silence and then start going off. And our opponent cliques us. Bye bye, Pure Steel Paladin. Here's a hand that does nothing. We repeal our artifact, draw a Mox Opal, hand it back to our opponent, who's now on a Blast Zone. And this Blast Zone, this is a really good card here. Because all of our payoffs, like aside from Mentor, um, which is kind of our backup plan, our payoffs cost two mana. Um, and this Blast Zone gets around Silence, right? Only says that our opponent can't cast spells, they can still activate abilities. And this is an activated ability. You'll see here on my end step, they put another charge counter on Blast Zone after they after they opt. There it is. And they can just leave it there, because now they can lord over us. They have a fumeral. They hit us with this clique. At this point, like we're starting to get low. We have a noxious survival, but we can't do a whole lot with it. They Snapcast or Bolt us, because at this point they're pretty confident that they're just going to be able to kill us. Um, also, they no longer really need to keep mana open because of this Blast Zone. We put the, try to put the SRAM on top. They have a Mana Leak. At that point we go to 3, and we draw a Marsh Flats and scoop it up, knowing that there's no possible way that we can win this game. So our opponent did exactly what they needed to do. They countered the appropriate spells. They had... A piece of removal. They had a threat that we couldn't deal with in this blast zone. Um, and that's how you beat this deck. You need to present a situation where your opponent can't start going off. Uh, if you stall your opponent out, you will win because all of the cards in this deck 
all of them just do nothing on their own. So let's have a look at game three. So looking at game three, we of course are going to take the play because we lost the last game. You can see how fast these games are. We used under three minutes on our clock. Our opponent used six in two games. Um, this hand was very close. But I ship it back. We get a Paladin. We get two, uh, two payoff pieces here. So we keep it. We put the Grape Shot to the bottom because we don't want the Grape Shot yet. The opponent leads off with a Fumarole. So we know we have an opportunity here to at least land this pure steel. We draw another land. Uh, we have seen a lot of lands. We saw we see a lot of them this league. The retracts, double retract, which we can't do anything with. But if this pure steel survives, which of course it doesn't, it would be amazing. But better lucky than good. We draw SRAM. We play a retract, get both of these back. We end up drawing another SRAM. At this point, I'm like, come on, deck, stop teasing me. Play the Paradise Mantle. And at this point, we're forced to stop again. But we have another payoff, and we have another retract. So our opponent passes back. We go for the repeal to start off, because I want to bait counter magic here against our opponent's three open mana, counter magic, or removal. We have another land in hand, too. And our opponent takes the bait with a mana leak that we can't pay for. So now, I don't have them on playing Dispel here. So here we gotta fire it off. We play the Hollow Fountain, and we SRAM, or we retract. We get to play all of our artifacts out again. We hit a Silence. We can be Noxious Revival, our retract with one bone saw left in hand, and our opponent scoops it up because they don't have a way to interact with us. Very quick win. Five minutes on our clock for three games. Um, this deck is lightning fast, and we're going to see a little bit more of that coming into match five. Our fifth and final match here against Bon Sheen. Bon Sheen was on Amulet Titan. This match was a ton of fun because uh, Bon Sheen was the kind of guy to chat with us. I don't know if it'll show it here, but we see this absolutely beautiful hand. We have three payoffs. We have one that we can play two of. We have a Spider Silk. We have a Retract. This is the dream. I see... Hold on. I want to back up. I'm talking to my friends on Discord here, and I see Cavern of Souls naming Snake, and I'm very, very confused until the Sakura Tribe Scout hits, and of course, then immediately I know what we're against. We're against Amulet Titan. We get the Serum Vision, so we actually get to cast this. For the one of, we got to cast it multiple times uh, this league. We put both of those cards on the bottom of our library because we don't need them. Our opponent plays another scout, bounces their cavern, which now makes sense because they can cast it, or not cast it, they can play it again, naming Giant. We draw a Mox Opal, and we go for the Pure Steel here. Yes. Play the Paradise Mantle, start yielding the triggers, draw cards, got the Mox Opal, get a repeal. Oh, it does show our chat. Oh, this is great. So, Bonsheen said his hand was so good against blue-white control. I said, I am blue-white. Uh, we had a little little exchange there. But we ran out of gas on that, uh, on that go. But we have a ton of payoffs. Opponent finds a bounce land. Doesn't play it yet. We go ahead. We untap. We find a mentor. But we play out another paladin, which gets packed and negationed. And our opponent realizes that... They can't exactly pay for it. We go ahead and grape shot their Sakura Tribe Scouts uh, just to get them off of the field in case they can pay for it, and our opponent is forced to scoop it up. Um, they did say in chat between rounds that they could pay for it, um, but with killing both of these guys, being able to draw into a Noxious Revival, uh, put Grape Shot back up, pretty sure we had that one under wraps quite tightly. Um, sideboard, we have Fragmentize and we have Path of Exile against this deck, which we bring both in. Sorry, Path to Exile. Uh, Path of Exile is a very great indie game that you should check out. I suppose GGG was bought by Tencent, so it's not an indie game anymore, but you should still check out PoE. Having a look at game two, they said we boarded into 
paths and into fragmentize and this hand is just beautiful we have the fragmentize for the amulet we have two dudes so i snap keep this my opponent plays the amulet which is exactly what we wanted to happen we play a planes we drew the spider silk which is important we blow up their amulet and ship it back which puts opponent much slower this coming uh coming few turns we play out our pure steel play a spider silk net and draw a Noxious Survival, which is not where we want to be, but we can get a Fragmentize back if we need it. And this Azusa is a problem. Because now our opponent can actually start popping off, and they have a path. They think that they're off to it. We go ahead and play our SRAM. And I, I'm so sad it doesn't so, show the chat. Because Bonsheen mentioned, like, oh my gosh, the interaction and the redundancy this guy has at all. Uh, and we actually drew another fragmentize, which I didn't really want at this point. Oh, there it is. There's the comment. Has the destruction and the redundancy. Feels bad, man. Yeah, dude. Uh, <laughs> this uh, this one I thought was going fantastic. We keep in a quarter shield because we're not really doing anything this turn. And our opponent goes ahead and plays a primeval titan. Uh, casual turn four primeval titan. Much, much slower than it could have been. Uh, we not just revival our repeal to try to get going off again. Said, told him we kind of petered out. Fetch to get the land out of our deck. Play the quarter shield, draw another land. Repeal, draw another land, and yet another <laughs> land. Uh, we scooped at that point. Uh, I told him, he said, how am I not dead? Said, All of my draws is, were land, and I actually revealed my hand to him. Um, I don't know if it shows the chat log here. But, uh, yeah, we drew, like, this is just absolute horseshit. Anyway, game three. All right, game three, the final game of the league. To me, this is the determine how well we do, and we are going to take the play. We have the advantage of winning game one. We draw this hand. We have the Fragmentize. We have Pure Steel. We have three Cheerios. To me, this looks insane being on the play. Uh, see, Bonchin, that's unlucky. Talking about the land situation. So they don't have the amulet, which basically means that we're on uh, a mold of six. But we go ahead, play our pure steel, start rocking out, play out a bunch of stuff, play a mox opal. We remember to suit up our paladin this time. Casual 412 reach vigilance. Um, we have the mox opal here. Uh, we wanted to play in case we had retract, but we drew more lands again. Right, there's a SRAM, which is good. We run it out, and we hit with our Pure Steel. I think we transfer some of this equipment over. No, not this game. We don't transfer any equipment over. Opponent has an Azusa. And at this point, we're just needing to draw into a single Cheerio or a Retract or a Repeal or anything. And there's a Repeal. Opponent puts a land into play. I think they had a spell pierce. So there's the retract, which they are holding the spell pierce for. We go ahead, play some more artifacts. We want to get the most value out of this retract. At some point, we have to start saying no to pure steel paladins. We drew another retract. Uh, I think this is about when we start saying no to pure steel. Oh, we're still drawing. They retract. Spell pierce. We let it go. We play another Mox Opal. Play another retract. And that's it. Bonsheen, excellent opponent. If you happen to see this on the internet, uh, please send us a message or a comment here on YouTube. I uh, would love to give you a shout out if you have any creative endeavors going on or anything like that. Um, so that's our league. Hey everybody, it's Jeremy from the Other Coast Games checking in at the end of the league. I just wanted to give a big thank you to those of you that stuck around and watched this first episode of Modern Massacre Aftermath. Um, I think this is a format that I'm going to continue to explore. Please let me know if you like it. Drop me a comment on YouTube or on one of the many Reddit posts that I'll put out about this video. Um, I take all your comments seriously, 
uh, and they're an easier type of video to put together to play a sweet league and then go back and talk over it rather than do it live if i want to do it live i may consider streaming if that's something that people are interested in um a few notes about cheerios here at the end of the league uh cheerios is a super sweet deck i think i want to refer to this as the lunch break archetype as in you can knock out a league during your lunch break uh the entire playtime on this league was under an hour for five matches um which is pretty phenomenal you know i, I used to play jund and paper uh and i played saltai wreck and there are times where you just go to time it happens but not with cheerios you either win or you lose very quickly uh, the deck has a little more game than I thought it did initially. You get to board into mentors and silences and stuff for your interactive matchups. Um, and we played against a couple control decks, and we didn't lose to either of the control decks. We did lose to uh, Green Black. I feel like hand disruption is much harder than dealing with removal, so you just don't get the option to start. Um, but super fun deck. I highly recommend giving it a try. Uh, and as always, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the Other Coast Games for more, and we'll see you next week.